In this video, we're going to give you a brief introduction to C Sharp, uh, developing console applications, and how you can interact with the console. Uh, so the attitude in this video is going to be for uh, those of you that have never seen .NET or perhaps maybe never even uh, written a program before. Um, so right off the bat, you'll notice that uh, I'm actually using Linux for this video. Uh, and the reason for that is simple. I tried and tried and tried with Windows. Um, on my hardware at work and it just wasn't having having it it uh, kept freezing up and killing my computer so because we're on Linux we're not going to be able to use Visual Studio there's a, another um, .NET IDE uh, which IDE stands for something development environment I'm not quite sure what the I stands for I think maybe integrated uh, but I'm not sure. But there's a utility for Linux, excuse me, an IDE for Linux called Mono Develop. If you don't have it, you can get it in Linux if you go to your terminal and type this command sudo sudo apt hyphen git. Um, this is the command to git software. Uh, and then you tell it to install Mono Develop. And it'll ask you for your password. And from that point on, it will install the program for you. You don't have to do anything else. Just type sudo app git install mono develop. Moving on, we're going to open mono develop. And you can see you get uh, a screen similar, uh, similar in concept to Visual Studio. So we're going to start a new solution and we're going to start a console project. Now what a console application is, there's several major types of apps applications. There are console applications, there's form applications, and web applications. Form application is like what you see here. Uh, you have forms that you can interact with. A console application, uh, it uh, runs in your terminal. Well, in Linux it's called the terminal. In Windows it's called the console or the DOS prompt. The little black square screen that you see sometimes with text like this uh, that's a console application so we're going to create a new one and I'll just call it console app one okay. and this is it we've written our first application now this you see it says using system namespace console app class main class public static void main. I'll go into the structure of all of this in another video um, but effectively what we have here is this is a complete program it is very simple um, and it should run. So you can see I press uh, I press build and run it comes up it tells us hello world and press any key to continue I continue and we're done. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we're still recording sorry okay so hello world this is the console object and it allows us to um, um, interact directly with that console window so there's actually several uh, console statements if you type console and press the period it gives you all of these options this is anything and everything that you can do with the terminal now some of these if you notice they have different icons this is for a property this is for a method um, that's an object oriented uh, theory concept uh, I'm not going to go into that for this video but effectively all you need to know is how you type console you press period and it gives you all of your options now the ones you're going to want to work with are these two guys right and right line now the difference between the two I'm going to do a right statement so you've seen right line I'm going to write another hello world But I'm going to use right instead of right line. Now watch what'll happen. It says hello world, hello world, right next to each other. The difference between the two of those is right line returns you to a new line after it's printed your text to the screen. So if I switch these around, then you'll see the opposite. You'll see them on two lines. Right. So I'll duplicate each one now. Okay. 
So the difference is whenever you are going to want streaming text to the console in an uninterrupted fashion, you use write. Otherwise, if you're just sending messages and you want your text to look nice and pretty, you use write line. Um, now, there are some techniques. So with Linux, if you notice, whenever I run it, it immediately creates this prompt that says press any key to continue. That is not um, that is not the standard across operating systems. So if you were to actually run this in Windows, um, it would not halt at all. Um, it would say hello world twice, and then it would exit before you could even see it. So it would just be a little flicker. Um, so a good way or a good shortcut to pause your execution is with another console statement called console read line. And what that read line does is it says, hey, you know what, I'm going to let them type freely as much as, you, as much as they want. And nothing's going to happen until you press enter. Once you press enter, it takes all of this text that you've typed and it feeds that text back into your program. So if I press enter, so what happened? It read in all the text, it passed it back to the program, then it proceeded to execute, and it got to the end of the program, and that was the end of it. Um, you're probably going to want to do something with that text. Um, so the, the way that you capture the text that was uh, entered in the console, you're going to declare a variable. I'm going to call it variable x. And now you're going to type freely. So I'll just say hello. And the program finishes running. Now notice it's giving me a warning here. It says the variable x is declared, but it's never used. Right? Now that's not an actual problem. It's just letting me know that, you know what, I'm declaring this variable, but, you know, I'm never actually using it. It's going to tell me that. Just, are you sure you really want variable x? And the reason why it warns is because variables take up space in memory. So it's going to say, hey, you know, you're just kind of using extra space, or you're taking up space, and you're not using it. Um, thought I would let you know. Uh, that's what a warning is about. So if we actually use x, um, that warning will go away. So the way I'm going to use x is I'm going to print it back out to the screen. I'll say console write line x. So now I'll come in and I'll say hi there. And it immediately writes hi there back out to the terminal. Um, so let's make this look a little neater. I'm going to get rid of a hello world and I'm going to say uh, type freely. So we're starting to take the shape of a input prompt here. So you say type freely, and I'll say OK, and it says OK back. Um, you may want to get a little fancier with it. So we'll say rather than just blindly repeating what we type, we'll give a little feedback to the user, and we'll say um, you typed and the variable x. Now notice this plus operator. This is effectively taking this text and adding this text to it. So we're combining two texts together. So I'll say hello. It says you typed hello. All right. Now the one thing that C Sharp will not do for you is correct your bad uh, grammar and punctuation. So if you need spaces or grammar or anything of that nature, you have to put that into your, uh, into your string. Now C sharp, the term string just means text. It actually means a string of characters. So if you're working with character data, it's a string. I don't know why you can't just call it text data, um, but it's a string. So again, we'll say hi there. You typed hi there, and now it's looking better grammatically. And that's it. This is the basics of C Sharp. Um, in the next video, we'll work more with some string data and show you a couple of tricks that you can do with it.